Hey guys, it's the WalterFootball.com after the dark show for April 4th, 2024. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Stefan Diggs trade, uh, grades for the Texans and the Bills and that deal, uh, plus some signings that happened and uh, whatever whatever else you guys want to talk about in the chat. So we're going to get to all that um, and a lot more. Uh, please hit like, subscribe, comment below, share this video. Visit the link in the description for the merch store. All that mean a lot to us. If you really want to help support the show, though, uh, you can do that with Super Chats. Uh, we got some great ones. Uh, um yesterday we had uh we had one from uh, john sanders we had 9 11 super chat as always from him which was great and then kevin kovac came through with like three super stickers and a and a ten dollar super chat so it was it was awesome so uh this is this is uh this is a really big help for us because as i always say that youtube ads pay nothing so um all that would be really appreciated if you want to help us support the show and keep it going uh another way you can do that is uh by buying my book my book is out uh, my third one, Jerks of the College Years. Um, we voted on the cover on the show, and uh, this one won out. Uh, plus, a lot of my family members like this one too. So, um, yeah, I, actually, my copies just arrived. So, I, like, yes, uh, or like this afternoon. So, I'm looking forward to seeing how it looks. Um, you know, in 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 paper, you know. Um, but yeah, this is this is something I've been working on for a long time. These are my stories from co from college, which was like 20 years ago. Um, and I met a lot of crazy people there. So uh, this is another way you can help support the show is by buying this book or you know uh, telling your friends about the show. That would help us out too. Uh, I am joined uh, by Kenny, uh, the president of the CapisFake.com. Kenny, how are you? Oh, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling rested. Uh, I've been, um, <laughs> um, I have been uh, sleeping for the last uh, you know, hour or so. So uh, I feel great. I, uh, I'm, I'm quite the opposite right now. Uh, we would have started the show about like an hour earlier, uh, except my daughter wouldn't go to sleep. And uh, I feel like I cursed myself because uh, on the show about like two weeks ago, I think I said, I'm like, I'm like, man, I can't believe how well my daughter sleeps. <laughs> she just like we put her down 830. She wakes up at 6 a.m. or so. She sleeps throughout the night, doesn't wake up. Uh, it's amazing because my son, uh, it took him. It used to take him a little bit to go to sleep, but he used to wake up like two or three times a night. Um, but now my daughter won't go to sleep. <laughs> It's like, it's like 11 o'clock each night. I'm behind work. I'm super tired, but uh, we're going to try to make it through this somehow, some way. Um, but yeah, if you, and by the way, if you didn't notice, I'm doing the intros now before introducing you because uh, we, we had a mishap uh, with, with Tom, uh, whereas like uh, we, I, I didn't get to do the intros until 37 minutes into the show because uh, we started talking about stuff and just we got on track. So I, I'm, I, I'm making sure to do that earlier. So in case uh, you're wondering, Kenny, we're, we're doing yeah. that now. Yeah, right. I, I saw you and Jacob uh, yesterday. You didn't okay. see you're, you're talking about that. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, we're all on the same page now. All right. Um, yeah. So, uh, if you guys have any comments, questions, just leave them in the in the chat. We'll get to them. Uh, yeah. Super chats get priority, of course. But uh, you know, we'll we'll get to anything. If you guys have any questions, it doesn't have to, that doesn't have to be about this or even football. Um, I'll answer it um, to the best of my ability, and maybe Kenny will too, as long as it doesn't <laughs> get canceled. Um, all right. So. Uh, <laughs> We have the straight here, and John, uh, the Bills fan, is uh, is asking, is saying, uh, "Talk me off the ledge." Talk me off the ledge. I love it. Yeah. Um, so it's a rough one for the Bills, I think. Uh, curious to hear what you have to say about this, Kenny. But the Texans uh, acquired Stephon Diggs. Kind of a surprise. Uh, I, I should just opened up Twitter this morning. I, I saw the Schefter tweet was the first thing I saw. I'm like, wow, this is kind of insane. Um, so the Texans got Stephon Diggs. They also got uh, a sixth round pick this year and a fifth round pick next year. Um, and uh, in exchange for that, they gave up a 2025 second round pick. This is Minnesota's pick that they got, not theirs. Uh, I'm sure they would have rather have given up theirs because Minnesota's, uh, we probably would agree that, um, that, uh, he, Minnesota's not going to be good this year, so uh, that's going to be higher ups. Probably going to be in like the thir in the thirties. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what uh, the Bills acquired for uh, Stephon Diggs. Um, and John saying Diggs obviously asked for a trade. Yeah, I, yeah, I know, but it's it still a surprise to see. It. Like I, I feel like if we saw like T Higgins get traded, uh, we would have like would have like expected that because you know he was franchised and he demanded a trade like quite publicly um but yeah i mean we know stefan diggs wasn't super happy in buffalo so I, I guess it isn't that much of a shock but like i just didn't expect it to happen this soon um yeah 
But anyway, um, so uh, and I'm like saying you missed the kit last night, Kenny. They did their team rankings. Walt well, Jacobs had uh, Jacob had 13 at 17 teams at number 32. Uh, somehow, <laughs> there's there are a lot of bad teams. Uh, in other words, all right. So, um, Kenny, uh, I graded this on the site for the Texans and the Bills. What are your thoughts on the trade? Like, what would you grade this trade? I mean, you are a professor, right? Like, what would you uh, <laughs> assign? What would you assign grades to these teams? Um, I. I, I, this is a hard one that it's hard because it's hard for me to determine what the bills plans are and I'm, or what's their, what are they thinking? And so I, I, my, my initial thought is, I, I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago. I went back and watched some of Stefan Diggs. He looks good. Like I don't know if people on Twitter, I heard people say, Oh, he was injured. He wasn't the same player. I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't see any evidence for that. Maybe it's the case. I didn't see any evidence for that. So this has got to be like a solid for the bills. Like a, this is like a C. Uh, maybe a C minus like you're in win now mode. Um, like this is it. Like, you know, if you're, if you're not going to win it, win it this year, if you're going to have to retool your team or reboot your team, um, like, okay. How Josh Allen's still in his prime. He's, he's still gonna be very good for many years. We think, but like, I don't know. It feels like you're wasting, you're potentially wasting a, some really good seasons in the middle of his prime. If you're kind of just not really trying to win now, and maybe they are trying to win now and they have a plan, but um, it's hard to it's hard to really make that case. So I don't know. This is like a C minus for the Bills in my mind. Um, and then this is in my from the from the Texans perspective, this is A plus. I mean, um, we talked about the Texans a couple weeks or last week. We talked about you know situations we're excited about. I, I talked about CJ Stroud and the Texans being the second that I'm most excited for, uh, second situation I'm most excited for. Um, this this makes them number one. I mean, I, I'm very excited about CJ Stroud taking a step forward. They've added a Joe, they've added Joe Mixon and uh and Stefan Diggs, who looked still good to me last year. I don't know. Um, I think this is a fantastic move for Houston. A second round pick is not, I mean, it's it's not cheap, obviously. I mean, you're giving up, you know, real capital, but it's a year away and it's something you got in a trade anyway. I mean, kind of feels like a little bit of gravy. So yeah, I, I don't understand. I, I don't want to totally bash the Bills, but maybe they have a plan, but I, I, I don't see it. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, so on the side, I also give it C-. minus. So we're on the we're on the same page about the Bills. I wouldn't give them a failure grade, though. Like, even though uh, right now it looks pretty brutal because, like you said, they are in all – like, they're in all-in mode now because, you know, uh, Josh Allen's just going to get more expensive and he's going to get older. He's going to get beat up as he runs more. It makes sense to try to win now, and this is this goes against that. Like, they already lost right. Gabe Davis this offseason. Not that Gabe Davis is great or, or anything, but, like, they lost their top two receivers from last year. Stephon Diggs is gone. So at the moment, this looks pretty brutal for the Bills. Um, yeah. Now, I think long term, it might be good because uh, we'll see what, what they draft at 28. Maybe they move up for receiver. Um, maybe they make another trade as uh, um, John says, uh, trade for Brandon Ayuk and all is forgiven. Like maybe maybe we just don't see Buffalo's entire plan yet. That, that yeah. could be the case. So, you know, what if they have a plan to trade for T Higgins, T. Higgins or Brandon Ayuk? Um, and, and so if they do that, suddenly we're going to be like, oh, OK, this makes sense. It's kind of like um, remember how uh, the, the Steelers traded Kenny Pickett on on a Friday. And um, we're like, why would they do that? It doesn't make any sense. And then the next day they got Justin Fields. You know, it was kind of like 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 it was like we didn't know the plan B yet uh, or the second part of the plan. Um and, and then we figure it out because once we saw it, it was like, OK, that makes sense. So maybe the Bills have something uh, cooked up that we just don't see yet. Um, so that that could definitely be the case. Maybe they're planning to trade up because now they have a, an extra second round pick. They have their own pick, obviously. Um, they have ammo to move up. Maybe the plan is to like make a huge leap up to get like Roma Dunze or something like that. Um, and suddenly, like that would make a lot of sense too, because they're going to get a cheap receiver or cheapish receiver um, who could grow with Josh Allen. But you know, even if they do that, if they go that route, I think that's good for the long term. But for this year, it's still going to hurt because even if Roma Dunze has a great rookie year, he's not going to be as great as Stephon Diggs could be. Of so uh, right. Right. So, uh, so it depends what the bills do. If, if they just do nothing and they draft the receiver at 28, this is going to be, this is going to look awful. If they move up for a receiver and they give up a lot of assets, you know, I, I'll, I'll understand it. And I think, okay, like that, this makes sense for the long haul, but not great for this year. But if they trade for Brandon Ayuk or T Higgins, I, it'll be outstanding because they're going to get younger at the, at the position. So, um, 
So yeah, that that's that's my thoughts for Buffalo, and uh, I agree with your take on the Texans. I, I gave them an A plus. Um, they are in uh, win now mode with CJ Shroud because um, it's so beneficial for teams on like having these quarterbacks and rookie deals because they're so cheap. Um, and, uh, I, I think that just having that, that cap space to pay for Josh Allen, um, it, or sorry, for Stefan Diggs is going to be, um, it's going to be like so, so great for them because now they have, I don't, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but like, I think they have the best trio of receivers in the NFL was Stefan Diggs, Nico Collins and, uh, Tank Dell. Like I can't think of a team that has a better trio, trio of receivers. I mean, it's, it's hard to compete with that one. Um, obviously Tank Dell coming back on a, you know, coming out, coming off the injury, um, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, it's, they're very, yeah, it's hard to argue that they're, uh, the, you know, they're, they're certainly in the contending, contending to be the best. Yeah. John says, I think the problem is, uh, trading digs within the conference. Um, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. What if they run into Houston in the playoffs? Uh, and I know they play Houston this year. So, um, that, that, that is potentially a problem. Um, now maybe the Bills think that Stefan Diggs has lost a step. Uh, John, John uh, says that. Um, he did decline statistically at the end of last year uh, with Joe Brady. So maybe the Bills think that Stephon Diggs is just not a good fit in, in Joe Brady's offense. And like, it maybe it doesn't even have to mean that he's declined. He's just maybe not a good fit in that offense uh, as far as they believe. Um, so that, that could be the case as well. So like, I feel, I feel like, you know, if you make a big trade like this and you deal your best offensive playmaker, like, there has to be some logic to it. It's not like the Bills are a dumb team that like they always make stupid moves. Like they, they've they've done a good job in recent years. So I think I think like either they believe Stefan Diggs is just a bad fit for the offense, or uh, any plus he's getting older, or uh, they have another plan to get a, another receiver. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, that's um, you know, you know, sometimes teams really know better than we do. Like, I mean. I, you know, in recent history, the, one of the greatest heists has to be the Seattle, Seattle Seahawks trading Russell Wilson mm -hmm. to Denver for a freaking haul, right? Multiple first round picks, multiple, you know, uh, day two picks, you know, you know, like multiple players thrown in. I mean, and um, and Russell Wilson clearly has lost, not the same player. Like they, they knew it. And maybe, you know, teams know things and they can then scheme around their, their like what their players flaws are. And so it, maybe the flaws don't look as bad on tape um, or it's not as obvious to other teams. And so we, you know, we've seen that before. Um, and so it's like, the, you know, the Broncos clearly did not see on tape and m multiple GMs were in on Russell Wilson, including Howie Rosen with the Eagles. I mean, what a disaster that would have been as an Eagles fan. That would have been, I mean, I'd still be crying about it. Um, you know, so I think like that, like that's, that's an example. And there is, there, you know, we could probably, if we sat, we could probably come up with several others where a team saw internally, Okay, this this player is not quite what what we what he used to be, but we have schemed in such a way that it, it's not really clear on film, and so other teams probably don't know it, or or maybe a few teams may pick up on it, but there's enough teams that probably have not realized it. Um, and let's let's just maximize the value right now. Let's get the best we can. And so I, if that's the case, if you know, if if week nine, week ten, we're looking back and we're going, oh wow. Uh, dig digs it has lost a step and it is noticeable um then we'll look back and be like oh yikes that was uh that was not nearly as good a trade for texas as we thought it was and the bills really pulled the fast one here uh, so that's definitely possible which i think maybe 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 it's really that it's hard to grade it completely um but on the same token we've also seen teams deal players and they were like why would you deal that guy? And they're like, just because they didn't want to deal with some aspect of it. And the guys are still, in, it, still way better than they anticipated. Maybe the best example to mention is Stefan Diggs from the Vikings <laughs> to the bills. I mean, like the, the Vikings, you know, I, you know, I uh, having talked to people, uh, having lived in Minnesota, talked to fans there. Um, you know, I, I know one person who worked for the Vikings um, in the front office like the general feel was, I don't want to say that. That sounds like I'm like them hoodie toady. Oh, I've got contacts. I don't. I just happen to know met one guy one time, and you know we text occasionally. Okay, I'm not like I'm not Adam Schefter with with my sources. <laughs> uh, but like the general feel for the Vikings was that like Diggs was a great player, but like we we think we'll see him start the decline re relatively soon. Let's get a first round pick and let's you know in a in a draft that's got some really good receivers we really like. You know they were targeting. 
You know, they thought they would get Brandon Ayuk or T. Higgins. They never thought Justin Jefferson would be on the board because um, some idiot teams ahead of them maybe passed. Anyway, that's a different story for another day. But, um, you know, like the Vikings, were, like, were, they were wrong. They thought Diggs would have, would have uh, you know, taken a step back sooner than, than this. And he's had several very good seasons in Buffalo, right? Four, like, fantastic seasons in Buffalo. I guess three and a half fantastic seasons in Buffalo. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, LaShawn McCoy is another one. Um, the Eagles traded him away, Chip Kelly traded him away, and turns out he still had a lot left in the tank. Um, so sometimes teams just have a really good inside track, like the Russell Wilson trade, um, and they make it smart. Or and then sometimes teams make a mistake and they trade a player too soon. Um, I think it's legitimately hard to determine at this point which one's going to be, obviously. Do you remember who uh, the Eagles got for LaShawn McCoy? Yeah, Kiko Alonso. That's right. <laughs> what a great trade. <laughs> Not. Um, that, yeah. was a, that was a horrible trade. Um, another trade uh, that, well, from the opposite end, where uh, I think people were concerned about it, and it ended up being a big swing for the Eagles, was uh, when the Eagles traded Donovan McNabb to the Redskins. And yeah. it was like within the division, we were like, what are you, crazy? Uh, how could you trade McNabb to a divisional opponent? And uh, turned out McNabb had just completely lost it. So you're right. I mean, Buffalo may know uh, if, if Stephon Diggs has lost it completely, like Buffalo knows it better than anyone. So, um, yeah, this yeah. this trade, like John was saying earlier, uh, talk me off a ledge. Like, I think that this trade may look bad now, but by October next year or November, we may be thinking, oh, wow, uh, Buffalo really knew what they were doing this entire time. Um, or, <laughs> or like, Diggs has a great year and just the Bills look stupid. So, um, like, I think this could really go either way. Um, John says, my 95-year-old grandpa died last week, and my grandma seems more upset about Diggs. <laughs> sorry, sorry to hear about that. Oh, John. wow. <laughs> sorry. <Right. laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Alan says if they deal, if they now do for Ayuk with the second they got and the money they save, it's positive for the bills. I, yeah, I agree. I, I, yeah, I, I think you would agree. I'd rather have Ayuk now than Diggs, just because Ayuk is so much younger. Yeah. I, I just, I can't remember. Why would the Niners do that? That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, like, I guess. I mean, yeah. They're in uh, absolute win now mode, right? Like, like you, yeah. if you're going to deal Ayuk, you, you wait a year. Like this is like, this is your, this might be, I mean, they, they're still in a moment to potentially win a title. I was about to say uh, they're doing it for the cap, but uh, I forgot who I was talking to. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The cap is fake. <laughs> of course. I, even you, you, you have mentioned the Texans like trading, you know, trading for digs and they got the cap space. I'm like, that doesn't matter. They, the cap space is irrelevant. They, yes. they could be 83 million dollars over the cap and they could still do it. Right, they could, yes, but not necessarily like would because not owners or not all owners are going to do that. Like, like it just it just shows that the owner's cheap at that point. Yeah. yeah. Um. Or, you know, relatively cheap. Uh, Mike yeah. says uh, Cincinnati is a better trio. Well, uh, Tyler Boyd's gone. So uh, I don't know who your third is there. Uh, 49ers have a better trio. I, I like, I'm not going to include tight end in that, but like, who's, who's San Francisco's third receiver? Well, Juwan Jennings. Juwan Jennings is free agent too. Uh, Philly is a better trio. Uh, they don't have a third. Um, Devontae Parker does, doesn't count, I don't think. So, I mean, if, you, if you're counting tight ends, then maybe that changes the, the, right. the, the, the yeah. No, uh, yeah, of course. But then then you have to think about quartets because the Texans also have Dalton Schultz, who played well last year, you know. Um, so uh, Detroit might. Uh, so I guess he is counting tight ends because Detroit doesn't have a third receiver. Uh, Seattle might. Um, I think Lockett's going to take uh, a big step backward this year. He's kind of he's like 32 now, I think. Um, which is like Chicago, Chicago. Um, who's Chicago's third? Um and obviously, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore. Who's Chicago's well, if, 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 if you're looking at tight ends, Cole Komet right. would be there, right? I mean, I, I think Mike's got a point in that, like, you know, maybe you know the you, if you're taking the top three pass catchers, if you're including tight ends, right. um, th there's a case to be made for some other teams. Uh, Chicago's third wide receiver is Tyler Scott, um, or or Bayless Jones, if he ever lives up to. His Although player. they've got a lot of draft capital coming in, so maybe that you know they maybe they walk away with a better option. Yeah, no, well, that's that's definitely true. And Chicago could draft the receiver at nine. Uh, the Eagles could draft the receiver at twenty-two, or they, they can move up. Uh, the Niners could draft the receiver uh, theoretically. The Lions uh, might be able to. Uh, Cincinnati might be able to. So, um, yeah, I think uh, there's Chicago's drafting receiver at nine. Uh, yeah, I think I think Chicago drafts either Roma Dunze or Brock Bowers. I can't decide who. 
Um, like Bowers may seem weird with Cole Kmet on the team, but uh, they, they kind of play both different positions and teams like using d- double tight ends. Like, like think about the Patriots when they had Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, it would kind of like be the same sort of deal. Um, let's see. Uh, digs over the hill and can tank, tank stay healthy. Uh, so I, I heard tank is uh, tank is good to go. Um, and in fact, I, I heard that he would have been good to go for the playoffs, but they already used uh, all their IR spots uh, to return. Um, so wow. yeah, so I, I think that was a big mistake on Houston's part. Um, but, uh, yeah, he should be, he should be good. It wasn't like, it wasn't like a torn ACR or anything like that. It was, um, it was an injury that's, you know, you can recover, com- recover from pretty easily. So, um, I'd land the freaky snow. Uh, <laughs> you, know, I, 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 you know, he said, you know, uh, he said that Diggs is over the hill. I'm like, well, like, I, you know, I don't, I don't know that. Like, you know, I, I didn't see that watching him late in the like late in the season you know he was not involved in the offense though i mean he was clearly not involved like he was not a primary read almost ever it seemed like the last few games of the season and into the playoffs like um he clearly was not they they were not intentionally trying to get the ball to him so maybe they know something we don't um but the moments where he was where he was catching passes and running after the catch he looked perfectly the same so you know, I don't know. It's hard. It feels hard to gauge. Um, I don't know that we have enough data to say he's over the hill or that he's not. I just, I, I don't mm-hmm. think we do. I, yeah, I agree with that. Um, but he is turning 31 soon. So, you know, I mean, if, if he's not over the hill now, he will be sometime soon. Um, but I, I think it's more likely that he just was a bad fit in the offense uh, and they wanted to move on. I, I think that that's what the case is. Plus, he's expensive. Uh, Mike says Cincinnati has Yosevich or whatever his name is. Um, <laughs> I, I I like him a little bit. I, I wouldn't, you know, I still think Houston is a better uh, trio. Um, Phillies Parker for number three. Uh, I, I hate Devontae Parker. I, mean, I, I think I think Paris Campbell is actually their more likely number three. But I think whoever they draft in the first two rounds is more likely their number three. That's I think they draft the receiver because um, given like we saw what happened to that team when uh, AJ Brown was not available. Like they just their offense fell apart. Um, Chicago, Detroit have yet to draft the number three. Yes, and Minnesota could draft the top third, uh, number three. Yeah, with KJ Osborne. Yeah, I, if, yeah, if it does, what happens uh, depends on what happens with Minnesota. Um, like says the big stats in the last ten games were terrible. Lots of drops too. Um, I, I actually heard that Stephon Diggs may have been playing through an injury too um, in those final games. I, I don't know if I, like I dreamt that or I heard that somewhere. I can't remember where I heard that, but I, mm-hmm. I, I think I heard that from somewhere. Don't, don't, don't. Um, don't take that as gospel or anything, but like I, I feel like I heard that at some point. Um, so uh, fantasy wise, uh, what do you think this does for the Bills? Let's just say like they don't they don't trade for Ayuk or uh, or T Higgins. Um, like where are like who benefits? Like obviously, I would say Khalil Shakir takes a big step forward. Uh, Curtis Samuel is there now. Uh, I feel like Dalton Kincaid is going to have a huge year, uh, getting getting a lot of targets. Um, and then, you know, James Cook is going to get more passes out of the backfield. And uh, I feel like whoever they drafted 28, but we don't know if they're going to be good. So I think the, mm-hmm. the primary uh, beneficiary from all this it has to be Khalil Shakir. What do you, what do you think? Uh, yeah, he would be the be- biggest beneficiary of the crew. But I don't think – I don't know that it's – I think maybe I, – I, I think we look up at the end of the year and just go, oh, the ball just got sp- – more was more spread around. Like kind of everyone got a little bit of extra. Mm-hmm. Um that that's my my anticipation is that well maybe none of these guys are actually useful for fantasy or or they are not useful enough where we really or it really matters where it's like yeah like there's there's more targets but like not not reliable enough to like want to plug into your lineup in, in any given week so my, my my concern is it becomes too inconsistent from week to week um you know no, no that no one demands the ball and it's just so spread around that you know, in any in any week, you're just like, oh, like Kincaid. One you know, one week he gets the you know eight targets and three touchdowns, and then he doesn't catch a ball for two weeks. Like, I I just think it could be that kind of situation where you're just like pulling your hair out with this team. So everyone becomes Gabe Davis, basically. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a bummer because you know we mentioned we talked about Curtis Samuel. I was excited about Curtis Samuel in this offense as the kind of the underneath option. Um, you know. Uh, you know, all, all playing off of Diggs. You know, I'm now I'm wondering, okay, what do they do with Samuel? What do they do with Diggs's routes? Do they do they try to replace that, or do they do they literally just like scrap the things he was doing? Then they just going to totally spread spread it out. Um, 
Curtis Samuel was already the kind of that player. Anyway, that he's kind of that feast or famine player. And I was excited that he would be in a more functional offense. So maybe that will still be the case. But now my excitement for Curtis Samuel is a little bit dampered, kind of not knowing what the offense is going to look like. I still think they draft a receiver at 28 or, or move up for one or – um, or take one in the second round or something like that. Um, I, I feel like that that player is going to get uh, Diggs' routes because th- there are a lot of good receivers in this draft class. It, it's seen as a, as a great class for receivers and also offensive tackles and quarterbacks. So um, it's it's a good time to need a receiver. Um, so um, I, I wanted to ask you this. So uh, Raymaker-wise, uh, I saw a Raymaker card, Raymaker tier card for Khalil Shakir. Um, this is for 2023, not 2024. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. 2023, not 2024. Um, how much would you pay or, or how much do you think a, a good value, a good a value for Kalosh Shakir Rainmaker card is? Mm, that's a good question. All right. The rain, I mean, the, the range probably will be, let me see. Um, mm, for 2023, not a 2024. Right. Yeah. Uh, can, do you see. want me to read off some uh some cards for sale so you have a better idea um uh, like okay so josh yeah, yeah, josh, josh jacobs is going for 1350 1350 dollars cole Komet's going for 550 brandon cooks who's not even on the team is going for 360 uh juju smith schuster for 275 um let's see here another uh I'll give you another example let's see deshaun watson for 2800 um let's see uh vikings kicker for 600 uh kyron williams 2100 <clears throat> wandale robinson 333 uh so there there's some idea of like where he might be i don't know to me on the very low end it's like 275 dollars on the high end it's i, I don't want to be paying more than 500 bucks for him it just it's too inconsistent i don't know i i don't feel like i know the i don't feel like i have the value like, I just don't feel like I know. Yeah, so he's he's going for five forty. So okay. I, I thought I thought that was a little too much. Uh, didn't want to pay for it, but it was it was intriguing at least because yeah, you know what if what if he's the number one outside receiver? Yeah, and and what if he's? I, mean, I just don't know if he's good. I mean, I, I'll have to go back and maybe pull him up on Game Pass and try to see. Yeah, like he might be good. I just I can't. Re- I don't know. I don't even know if he's good or not. I guess it's part of the question. Um. You know, it's not just opportunity. If you suck, you know, the opportunity is going to fade fast. You know, they, they may, they, you may start off as the opportunity getting the number one targets, but if you suck, you know, by week two or three, you're not going to be getting those same targets. Yeah. Um, Degenerate on $5 super chat. Thanks so Let's much. Go. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, this, like I said, I always say this always, always helps out a lot. Um, he's asking anyone you like as a surprise riser into the first round or surprise guys that drop to the second round. Hope all is well. Uh, yeah, I hope all is well with you too. Um, I, do you mean just wide receivers or in general, um, for the draft? Because, uh, think about this a little bit. Um, as far as like players who may drop into uh, the second round, I, I like, wouldn't surprise me off Elia to Latu fell into the second round just because there are some major uh, injury question marks with him. Um, and like when, when players usually fall, it's because um, either they're like super toxic in the locker room or, um, or, or they just uh, like, like they just have severe medical issues. Uh, I remember like Juwan Taylor from uh, it's like, I forget how long ago it was. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone thought he's going to go like number nine to Jacksonville. Um, and he fell to the second round just because, like, there's just major medical problems. Uh, Miles Jack was another one. He fell to the second round. Um, who's that Notre Dame tight end? I can't remember his name. But he, he fell to the second round as well. Um, and it's ju- it just, like, just medical problems with these guys. Um, so I, I think that there's a good chance that uh, that he falls. Uh, Amarius Mims is another one. Like, I, I feel like uh, a lot of people have him um, in the first round. And he has a huge upside for sure like just based on talent he should be in the first round but he has medical problems as well so it wouldn't surprise me at all if he fell to like mid second round and like people are like why is mary's mim still on the board and like you're like you see like uh bell kuiper he's like this guy's number 20 on my board like he's still available it's like i wonder why it's because like it's because he's injured and like you know um like these teams are just super wary of these guys who can't stay healthy um so uh yeah i mean that that's that's a problem um I think for quarterbacks, like 
what's surprised me at all if like one of Bo Nix or um, Michael Penix Jr. really fell. And I think like based on Penix's recent uh, pro day, um, I think it's more likely to be Bo Nix. Like, and it, it could even be JJ McCarthy. Like, there's so much buzz about McCarthy going like number three or number six. Like, it really reminds me of Mac Jones a couple years ago, and then most more recently Will Levis. Uh, everyone was like, "Oh, Will Levis definitely going number four to the Colts," and he didn't even go in the first round. Um, yeah, I never I, understood that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it happens all the time. And like, yeah. I, I think like every quarterback who's hyped up like that tends to fall. Um, and like if, if the Patriots didn't take Mac Jones, like who knows how far he would have fallen. Um, another one was Malik Willis. Like he was hyped up as well. He, he felt to the third round. Uh, I, I never, I never really saw the hype with JJ McCarthy. Like, I think he's an okay prospect. I, I just don't think he's necessarily a first rounder. Like I think he's much closer to Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. Than he is to the top three guys. Um, so I think he could definitely fall. Um, and uh, I have to think about like players who could rise. Um, I think, I, I mean, Adane Mitchell is someone who like we've had in the second round, Johnny Newton uh, we've had him in the second round. I feel like those guys could, could sneak into the first round cause they've had good workouts. Um, uh, th- there's, there's a safety uh, off the top of my head. I can't remember who it was. Oh, um, I think it's Cole Bishop, uh, Cole Bishop. Um, He's like super athletic. I, I think he could rise. Although, like the 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 need for like the demand for safeties is like all time low. Like because just just look at how low safeties are being paid this off season. Like it's it's crazy. We'll, we'll talk about one in a second. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so uh, so maybe maybe like the safeties really fall. So I, I'll take that back. I, I think that there's a good chance that like we see no safeties in the first round, um, just because like there's no need for them. So uh, yeah, so I, I hope that answers your question, Degenerate on. Um, yeah, Mike says I love Mary Smith. Yeah, I, I, he's great talent. Um, just injury problems. And uh, Mike says that Levis drop shocked me last year. Um, I, it, I don't, th- I think I had him in the second round. Um, yeah. I, maybe I could be wrong, but I think I had him in the second round in my mock draft just because like I, I couldn't fit him anywhere. It was kind of like the same thing with Malik Willis, I couldn't fit him anywhere. And like it was funny, like leading up to that draft, the, the 2022 draft when uh, Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis are the top quarterbacks. Like it was funny because like. Charlie and I were like, we're like, we can't fit Malik Willis anywhere. Cause like Charlie would speak to like team a, they'd be like, no, we hate Malik Willis. These teams, the quarterbacks. And then he speaks to another team. I'm like, no, he sucks. And like team C, no, he sucks. Team D, you know, he sucks. And we're like, uh, all these teams that need quarterbacks don't like him. Where's it going to go? <laughs> and so we're like, I guess we're not putting him in the first round. Um, and so he ended and up- in the fourth round, I mean, like, it was, uh, it was quite the fall. I think it was third round that he went, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was, have- yeah. We've seen this over the last couple of years, with you know, I mean, over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, there, there, there are several guys that are in this cat. I mean, I think about Jimmy Clausen, mm-hmm. people talked to, talked him up. Um, and, you know, he fell. Um, Trent Edwards was another one that people thought could be a sneaky top 10 pick who ended up going, you know, uh, you know, he was definitely going to be the third quarterback off the board and it made the top 10. He ended up being like the fifth quarterback off the board in late second round. Um, I mean, like you just have like, uh, you know, random. This I mean, there's players that like, you know, the, they get hyped up, and then you talk to NFL teams. You're like, no, nah, that guy sucks. What are you talking about like? So Malik Willis is another one. Like, just yeah, like people are talking about like, come on, with the Liberty, come on. Like, <laughs> I mean, you know, go Flames, but whatever, dude. <laughs> Drew Drew Lock was another guy. I remember him getting first yeah. round buzz, and he he went in the second round. Um, so yeah, uh, Mike says you got to gamble on a, a first on a quarterback with tools like Levis. Yeah, I mean, like Levis has big upside, but it's just low, very low floor with him. Um, so uh, like, not a surprise at all that he fell in the second round. And Slew says maybe the Bills saw Diggs driving Lamborghini and they panicked. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, the very, very, very nice. Um, uh, all right, so uh, we had some signings that happened as well. Um, we had the Jaguars re-signing Foye Oluwakan, three years, $45 million, which sounds like a lot for Oluwakan, uh, an off-ball linebacker. But um, he's had – he's like, he played exceptional football last year. Like, he made – he's made huge strides in his game. Uh, he's still young. So, I, I like uh, – this move's fine. I give it a B plus. Uh, nothing crazy. Um, it's not a great value, so I wouldn't put an A. Uh, but the Jaguars have a poor defense. So, it's, I think it's important for them to keep their few – like really good defensive players and a low con was one of them. Um, Carson Wentz uh, signed one year. We didn't get the contract details on this. So we don't know how much money it was. I, I can't imagine it was for that much. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think this is a great signing for the chiefs because as, as you very well know, Kenny, 
uh, having a backup quarterback when you're who's really good when you're um, competing for the Super Bowl is is extremely important. Um, and so if Mahomes goes down for four or five games, or who knows if he gets hurt uh, and has to miss the playoffs, I think the Chiefs are in relatively good hands for a backup at least. Um, at least what, a, go ahead. what a story that would be. Yeah. I mean, if somehow Mahomes went down, I mean, Andy Reid has shown he is, you know, not only a great, um, uh, you know, not only not only is he just great all time. NFL coach, he's maybe the best quarterback coach ever. Mm -hmm. Like we've seen him get the most out of quarterbacks over and over and over again. And remember, people talk about Mahomes just having terrible mechanics. I mean, there were so many like legitimate, smart NFL people who just were like, Mahomes is a huge risk. He's his mechanics are terrible. They'll never be able to rein him in and get him to be disciplined. Um, what what a what a huge mistake to draft him over Deshaun Watson. I mean, that was the talk when Mahomes was drafted. Um, and like I'm just convinced Andy Reid was a huge reason for Mahomes. I mean, Mahomes is a huge talent. He's a hard worker. He's a super smart player. But like Mahomes, like Mahomes being coached up by Andy Reid is like, it's just huge. And so, um, like Carson Wentz is just like similar. Not obviously not nearly as talented as Mahomes, but a very similar player. Like their style of play is remarkably similar. Um, in some ways, I think Carson Wentz is even a, is a little bit of a better rusher in the open field, um, or at least was before the injuries. So like a guy like Carson Wentz, he needs a guy like he needed Andy Reid. He needs that kind of guy to really coach him up, be hard on him. Um, and so, uh, you know, can you imagine the situation if Mahomes were to go down and Carson Wentz having been coached by Andy Reid, what he could do? I mean, I, I, I you would I would not say the Chiefs are, you know, are no longer a, a contender. Um, I, I think Carson Wentz in almost any other system is not. the Even even with the Rams, like the Rams system is quarterback friendly, but it's not a quarterback coach you up system. He's not coach McVay is not making the quarterback better. He's making the system simpler for the quarterback, which is very different than what Andy Reid is doing. Andy Reid is still running a relatively complex system that's that demands more of the quarterback than what McVay demands. But he simply is teaching you how to do it well. And he's just better at it than most. And it's why Andy Reid is, you know, one of the all-time greats. Yeah, Kevin Kovac, the five dollar super sticker. Thanks so much, Kevin. I really appreciate it. Uh Kevin, you're the real one. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, you were a big help yesterday and as today as well. So thank you so much for the support. Again, if you have any questions, we'll we'll post it. Um, I'm, uh, I'm reaching. I'm reaching back here on my. Uh, for those of you who are on YouTube, hold on. Those of you watching live, you can. I'm going to pull this up right here. This is my. I have a bobblehead collection. If I don't know if people see that there, I have a bobblehead collection. Multiple okay. different peoples. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> my Carson Wentz bobblehead. There it is. Very nice. Very. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, I've got my, uh, I've got, um, you know, Ronald Reagan, greatest president in American history. Um, I've got, uh, Alexander Hamilton and, uh, and, uh, Ben Franklin, Martin Luther King. Cause I got to appease my woke friends. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I got, uh, Charles Spurgeon, who was a great famous Baptist pastor in the 1800s, John Calvin and Martin Luther, also famous pastors in the 1500s and, uh, and, uh, Bryce Harper and, Carson Wentz. How about that for a uh, eclectic, <laughs> eclectic tree? Oh, and uh, Hank Aaron, the real all-time home runs champion, not Barry Bonds, that uh, cheating SO. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, it's, it's so random. Those those guys. <laughs> so, That's my, great. Uh... <laughs> that is all. That is awesome. Um, yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely great bobblehead collection. That's that's so that's so cool. that's so like from different aspects of, of life and. You know of, of everything that's that's so awesome um I, by the way i like martin luther king legitimately i'm you know i'm i'm just being um i'm just being antagonistic to my woke friends out there oh i i would um i don't think he i don't think he's woke anymore i think that he's like anti-woke from right like, i mean compared to the modern nonsense right yeah i, I he would <laughs> he would be conservative these days <laughs> yeah. really i just be. like i like i just like i like uh trolling people that's all yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, totally people is the best. Um, no, no, I totally agree with what you said about Andy Reid. Um, he's he's turned bad quarterbacks into okay ones. He's turned okay quarterbacks into good ones. He's turned good ones into great ones. And he's turned great ones into uh, uh, first battle Hall of Famers. Like, we saw what he did with A.J. Feely. Like, would Feely go like 6-1 and one or 7-1 and one in his eight starts? Um, 
he turned uh, Jeff. Remember Jeff Garcia on his on his yeah. like last legs. He turned. He had him playing well. He turned McNabb into a Pro Bowler. And I don't think like McNabb was not like a great talent. Well, I mean, he had a lot of talent. He just like he just had a lot of problems with his games, like with his mechanics and stuff like that. But like he, he McNabb mm-hmm. was on a Pro Bowl level with with Andy Reid. And then without Andy Reid, he just looked lost. And then um, now we see what he's doing with uh, Patrick Mahomes. Um, mm-hmm. And also, also he did a lot of great work out with Alex Smith too. I mean, Alex Smith, yeah. I mean, Alex Smith had you know a journeyman career, yep. uh, you know, of, of sorts. Um, you know that type of kind of pedestrian career, I meant to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Carson Wentz, you know, that what a story that could be, you know, um, of redemption for him. And I always root for Carson Wentz. Uh, always, you know, 2017 doesn't happen without him. Um, he helped, you know, he wasn't, he didn't play in the Super Bowl, but he definitely helped propel the Eagles. Um, so yeah, I, I pour, my, my boy will always be, he'll always be on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was, he was the MVP until he got, went down in LA. Um, like, what a shame. I mean, not, not for the team because they ended up winning, but, for for Carson Wentz, his career would have gone so much differently um, had he not suffered that injury. And all, I think the car, I think the concussion he start, he suffered against uh, Seattle in that playoff game with uh, Jadamian Clowney, I think that derailed his career because ever since that concussion, he just wasn't the same. Uh, and like, yeah, he he came back from that knee injury like that first year he wasn't as good. Um, but the se- his second year, remember he dragged that Eagles team into the playoffs. Yeah, like they he had, was great. They had, they had no talent on that team. The 2019, um, that was the yeah. 2019 team. He was awesome yeah. that year. Yeah, he really was. And like, they had no receivers. He, it was like, he was, I felt like he was a uh, borderline MVP that year. Um, and then he had that concussion in, in the first round of the playoffs against Seattle. And he just, he looked lost uh, after that, that, that first year with, uh, in 2020. Um, remember how bad he was in, against the Rams in the, in week two. Uh, that year, the COVID year, um, yeah. he was he was just so just terrible, and then the Eagles had to move on from him. Um, and uh, you know, you know, you know, we're still you know, medical science, obviously, still progressing, learning. Like, you know, I, I wonder if concussions are just way. Uh, yeah, th- my speculation is that concussions are just way more devastating than we realize, and the lingering effects of a concussion can just mm-hmm. go affect players in, in ways we just don't realize. Like, I, I just wonder. You know, in 30 or 40 years, you know, when we've got way more medical science on it, we'll look back and be like, oh, that's what happened to Carson Wentz. Oh, that's what happened to Antonio Brown. Or like, like, I wonder, like, legitimately, you know, I hate to, it sounds terrible to even say it, uh, but I, I just, yeah, I, I don't think you're crazy by saying that. I mean, yeah, Antonio Brown wasn't the same after, after that Vontez Berkman hit, you know, in, in the in the playoff game. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I think you're right. Like in a few decades, I think we're going to know a lot more about this, and well, hopefully, in a few decades, they'll be able to just prevent all this, all this together. Like, so hopefully, we go that route. But um, yeah, so I mean, Carson Wentz looked good in that one game um, we saw last year. With uh, he had he had some nice throws to the spicy meatball, um, the, the Davis Allen, the tight end for the Rams, and uh, in that game, Carson Wentz scrambled 17 times for 56 rushing yards and a touchdown. Um, he almost won me sixty thousand dollars in DraftKings. If I made, I, like, I, I remember telling you this. If I made a t- uh, made a swap from um, who did I play? I played Zamir White over James Conner. If I like, and I was debating this, like, heading into kickoff, and I was like, man, I want to go with Conner, but he's gonna be highly owned. So I, I went with Zamir White. If I played James Conner, I would have won sixty thousand dollars in DraftKings. Instead, I, I I did not win nearly as much, <laughs> not not even a tenth of that. So um, that was uh, unfortunate. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, that, Carson Wentz had a, a great performance in that game. Like, granted, it was against the Niners' backups, but um, he did a lot of studying with John Gruden. Um, like, so he's he's kind of I think he's like rededicated himself to football. So I'm I'm excited to see what happens with him. I, I mean, obviously, he may not even play this year, uh, but right. uh, if he does play, I think that we're going to see him do well. So I, I gave this a signing an A. Um, I think it's a great move for the Chiefs here. Um, yeah. I'm like saying, I'm okay. The arc of the universe is broad and it leans toward justice. A great quote. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, okay. So the, the other signing that happened, the Colts re-signed Julian Blackman one year, 7.7 million. Um, this is, uh, uh, I was talking about safety signings and like how these guys have been super cheap all off season. There's no demand for them. Like Jordan Poyer signed for like 3 million. Like I know he's older, but still, um, like these guys have been going like super cheap. Not the seven point seven million is nothing, but like it's only one year. There's no risk to this. And Blackman's coming off his best year, uh, so it's like poor, poor Julian Blackman that like to have his best year, and he must be thinking like, oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna cash in this off season 
no, <laughs> no, no safety has. Uh, but you know, for the Colts, it's a it's an amazing deal to get this guy back on a low risk deal. Um, yeah. So so yeah, it's a great move for them. So a- any thoughts on you know any more thoughts on Wentz or the other guys or anything else? Yeah, uh, I think um, I think it's always smart for players looking to cash in to stick with their team if they were successful. Like your prob- your highest probability is sticking there and trying to stay in a system you know and thrive um, in a team that seems to be ascending rather than trying to sign a one year prove it deal with a random team that may or may not work out. So pro- probably in, be- in Blackman's best interest. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully for him, um, next offseason, the safety market will be um, more lucrative for these guys uh, because uh, they, they really got paid nothing. Think about Justin Simmons still, I mean, yeah. he's still holding out. Right? He's still waiting, waiting, waiting. I mean, a guy of his caliber almost never makes it this late in free agency. I mean, it's very rare. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's, he's a stellar safety, and he's just sitting out there right now. It's, uh, he's, it's pretty Waiting because he wants to get paid. Yeah, and I don't know what his, what his, I mean. I think inevitably he's going to have to sign a one year deal to try mm-hmm. to rehit the market again next year. I think that's the most likely scenario. Yeah, I think we have Jordan Whitehead. Uh, Joy, I thought they this Jordan Black. Oh, Cameron Curl sign. Uh, we have Deshaun Gibson, Quandre Diggs. Um, it's good safety still available. I think Byard side. Um, but um, yeah, I mean there there's some good safeties out there, and including Justin Simmons, who's a four star safety here. Um, I don't think I don't think there are any other four star players available. Um, so it's kind of just shows you how bad this market is. Although <laughs> look at the backers <laughs> overpaying. I think this happened like right away in free agency. I don't think they really understood the the market here. Like they paid Xavier McKinney four years, sixty eight million. Deshaun Elliott, who's just, just right below him, two years, six million. <laughs> it's like me and my fantasy auction draft every year. You know, spending ninety dollars of our two hundred dollar budget on a running back, and then. Everyone else spends forty seven dollars on a running back, you know. <laughs> Me. Yeah, got to got to be financially savvy these days. Um, uh, Mike says uh, there there's always a f- couple of free agents who cash in by waiting, like Leonard Floyd last year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, <clears throat> maybe maybe Simmons is doing the smart thing. He's like waiting for an injury to happen and like for a team to panic or something, you know. Um, you know what? If, like, I mean, what if uh, what if the Packers see McKinney tear Terry's ACL? Like, the Packers already overpay for one safety. Like, maybe they'll do it again. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I think I think it's it's smart on Simmons' part. Like, why sign a cheap deal right now? Like, he has all off season. Um, like OTAs don't start for three months, three and a half months. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you want you want to get into your you mean you want to get into the team facility. You want to start meeting your teammates. You want to start studying playbook. You want to get to know coaches. Like. There's a lot of good advantages to like getting in sooner rather than later. Um, like, like waiting till April or May is one thing, but waiting till August like could put you at a significant disadvantage. That's fair. Um, although I think like safety is, it's not like quarterback or anything, you know, um, or even wide receiver. You have to be on the same page as your quarterback. Um, I feel like safety. There's like a it's like a lesser learning curve, you know. Um, Maybe. So. Yeah, so I mean, I I think it's I think he will be okay. Like he's just that talented, you know. He, his talent can make up for um, any any missed uh, chemistry with his new teammates, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So I mean, that's that's all the news uh, that happened today. Um. Do you have anything else that you want to bring up, Kenny? Um. Yeah. Well, two two articles have been posted at thecapisfake.com in the last okay. week after five months of no post. Nice. Uh, you know, two and one. That's how I roll. It's. You know, when it rains and pours, as they say. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh no, so last week I um I put I posted an article on uh the rookie cap and kind of explaining the rookie pool, the rookie wage scale, how they work. Uh, a lot of people kind of don't understand, like dude, there are three different things the rookie cap, the rookie pool, and the rookie wage scale are three distinct things. They obviously they they connect, but kind of explain the nuances between them. So if you're a nerd and you want to understand the nuances between rookie uh contracts. That, that post hopefully uh, be helpful to you. Um, the other article I wrote was uh, basically there's no such thing as a cap casualty. Keelan and Keenan <laughs> Allen proves it. Like, so I basically just like people see, you hear this all the time. Oh, he was a cap casual. Oh, they had to trade him because they couldn't get him under the cap or they, they, they had to release him because he's a cap casualty. Um, and so uh, <laughs> um, like, I think generally like the idea of a cap casualty is it's not reality. And so um Keenan Allen was not a cap casualty. I called him a cash casual casualty mm. uh, in the article. Like, it's not that they don't have the cap space; it's that they don't want to pay him the cash. 
And right. so, um, so that's that's that, that's the reality. Like when players get cut or released, it's not about cap space. It's about money. It's about the owner saying, "I don't want to spend the money on this guy. Uh, I want to keep the money." And hey, I'm a capitalist. I believe I like people making money. I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing for the world. In fact, the very at the very end of the article, I put I have a paragraph on that. Like, is it immoral or is it unethical for owners to like try to maximize profits? Is it wrong? Like, well, no, it's not wrong. Like, it's totally appropriate for an owner of a business to try to make more money. And mm -hmm. that's what the owners try to do. I just don't like being lied to. Like the ownership who try to, oh, well, we, we, they, they want you to believe that like, we, well, we would have spent the money, but that pesky cap, it just, that salary cap, it gets us every time. Don't like, don't piss on my leg and tell me it's water. Okay. <laughs> just, just tell me, hey, I'm going to piss on your leg because I can. And um, <laughs> like, then it's on me to move my leg, right? But if I don't move my leg, well, then okay. Well, then I just have to suffer the cost. Like, you know, if ownership just says, listen, guys, we're not going to shell out $23 million for Keenan Allen because, like, because, like, we don't want to because, like, we have to buy, like, we want to buy another mansion in Hawaii. Like, if the fans know that and they still want to support the Chargers, like, you know, they're like all of their, their whole, like, you know, eight fans. Um, <laughs> like, if the fans still want to support a team that, like, doesn't care about winning and doesn't want to actually put the best product out there, then, like, Okay, fine. Like truth and advertising, you know what you're getting. Support the you know the cheap team, fine. But like, I just don't. What I don't like is the uh, the lies. The you know, it's not. It's never an overt lie. It's always just they leak things to a media. They say this. They say that, and they want to reinforce the narrative of like, well, you know, we're not cheap. We want to spend, but that stupid salary cap, man. It just it just forces us, you know. And I just I just can't do it. Sorry, guys. I, I just I guess I'm gonna have to go buy this mansion over here. I mean that's um, that's what they kind of want you to. You, you you froze on me, or maybe I froze on I you. Lose, I lose you there. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I, one of us lost each other's or oh, okay. the other one. I, I don't know yeah. whose fault it was or whose internet <laughs> fault it was. So anyway, that's that's my take. If anyone's interested, I explain the contract situation. I explain what they could have done. They had five or six options to keep him. They could have got him under the cap pretty easily if they wanted to. And they just they just chose not to to save twenty three million dollars. I got to be honest, I might have done the same thing. I if I were an owner of a team, I might be a cheap sob too. <laughs> uh, well, Kevin with the ten dollars super sticker. Thanks, really. Thanks so much, Kevin. Just really appreciate. Uh, Let's go, you Kevin. Know, You're the real one. Yeah, really support it, Kevin. Re really appreciate it, Kevin. Uh, thanks for all your support. Um, I, I was going to bring that up, but I don't want to interrupt uh, Kenny's rant. <laughs> 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 it's just interesting though, like. I mean, if you're like, if you're a fan of a team and they start doing this, like, uh, you know, with, for example, the bills here, they don't want to pay Stefan Diggs. Like, would you just like endure it as a fan or would you like jump ship and, like another team? Or I, I don't know. Like I, I, as if I were a fan of a team and they just were super cheap, I'd be like, I'd be frustrated. And I'd be like, ah, I'm not rooting for anyone at this point. You know, I, I'd be frustrated. I mean, like, I, I, I am fortunate. I happen to root for a team that is one of the biggest spenders every year. Um, so like, you know, um, yeah, I mean, there are teams that are really cheap. Uh, the Patriots is a prime example. Um, they're a super cheap team. Like Robert Kraft does not spend money on the team. He doesn't spend money on coaches. He does, doesn't spend money on facilities. I mean, he's a super cheap guy. Um, maybe that's why he got to be a billionaire. Cause he's just really frugal and smart and savvy. I don't know. But um but like they just lucked out and drafted Tom Brady. I mean, it didn't say luck, I and mean, they, they they you know they selected the guy to deserve the credit. But like they ended up with Tom Brady, a guy who's just this ferocious, hard worker. You know, the, the greatest you know greatest quarterback ever. You know, we could argue you know about that, whatever. But like you know, they, it's not because they're spending money. It's not the reason. Um, the Bengals super cheap. The Chargers, the Cardinals, uh, the Packers are super cheap. But that's because they don't have a, you know, a billionaire owner behind them. They're publicly owned by the. You know, they're a trust of the city publicly owned. They don't have one owner. So they, they get a pass. Uh, you know, it's not like a bunch of uh, blue collar workers are going to get together and throw in a couple <laughs> extra hundred million dollars. So uh, <laughs> they can only spend money as revenue comes in throughout the course of the season. So, you know, that's not it's not. Um, so, yeah, there are certain teams that are just really, really terrible at it. Uh, they're super cheap. And then there are teams that just throw money around like crazy because the owner clearly wants to win and profits are important. But they're willing to sacrifice profits for the sake of, of winning. Mm -hmm. um, John asking, did you tell Brandon Bean the cap is fake? <laughs> Brandon Bean? I don't even know who that is. The Bills GM. 
Oh, he's the Bills GM. Oh, so, oh, his name is Brandon Bean. That's funny. I did not <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What year did he become the GM? <laughs> uh, he's been there a while. Um, okay, that's that's funny. I for some reason did not realize his name was Brandon Bean. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh he's been GM since 2017. Oh, uh, in my mind, I thought he was okay. I thought his name was Matt. <laughs> Matt Bean. <laughs> I thought it was Matt. Whatever. Brandon Bean. Wait a minute. Not to be confused with Billy Bean. Billy Bean, right? Um, John says at least the Bills got a second for Diggs instead of a fourth, like the Chargers got for Keenan Allen. Yeah, that's true. Um, hey, the Bills also got three and a half years of service out of him. Yeah, um, and Keenan Allen, uh, Keenan Allen's a year older, but still, like, the Bills definitely got a better shade than the Chargers did for Allen. Um, and I think Allen will be will be better going um, going forward. Like, I, I think I think Keenan Allen's skill set uh, is the kind of skill set that lasts longer. I think a- Allen could be very effective well into his 30s, mm-hmm. um, where Diggs's skill set is very highly predicated upon his quickness in and out of the breaks like once your quickness and speed begins to s- slow down i could see digs falling like, maybe that's what bills maybe the bills have seen that in practice and they're just like oh like um we're keenan allen like he's never been a speedster that's not his game his game is smarts knowing the, the nuance of the defense finding the zone good hands um it's vision after the catch like none of that fades we saw that with larry fitzgerald like larry fitzgerald was, was blazing fast um, but when his speed went, he was still incredibly effective um, for the Cardinals and probably played five years after most guys would have played because he had skills that kind of translate to a guy, even if you don't have great speed. Yeah, I mean, and Colin Bolden was another guy, played mm-hmm. well into his 30s. Um, yeah. And, and I, it sounds silly to say this name, but Jerry Rice, I mean, he played till he was 41 with the Raiders. Um, and he, he had a great season when he was 40. Uh, that was the year the Raiders went to the Super Bowl. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that like receivers like that can play for a long time. It's just with Keenan Allen has been his health too. Like you have to wonder if he's going to stay healthy, but if he can, I, I, if he can, I totally agree. Um, Mike says, I think Diggs had an eight, a 28 million guaranteed salary this year, but now Houston has to pay that. This is complicated. Um, yeah, the bills are on the books for some, for a lot of dead money, but the Texans are paying some of it too. Um, it says the bills are eating 31 million now instead of 28. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they get them off the books after the season. So um, important for uh, important cap implications for teams not willing to spend, uh, like, like like the That's Eagles correct. or the Saints. You know, um, I'm I'm looking at the contract right now. Actually, I had not looked at it yet, and so I didn't realize uh, what the dead money would be. Um, he wow, he is under contract through 2027. Um, now there's not a, there's not a lot of guaranteed money, so. Uh, well, at the end of the day, they, the Texas can get out of it at the end of the season. So yeah. it's eight, it's eighteen and a half million on the books this year, um, guaranteed, fully guaranteed. So they're on the hook for eighteen and a half million for one year, and then they could get out of it, which I would imagine they would want to, because the contract, you know, it's got he's going to have uh, like another fifty million over the course of three seasons. They probably don't want to pay that. Yeah. Um... John says, uh, Vikings second two. Okay, I'm off the ledge. <laughs> the Vikings, that, that pick could be like number 35 or 36. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a much better deal than what the Chargers got. Um, but then again, like what, what we were saying before, it, it hurts them uh, right now uh, for the immediate future, unless they have uh, a, a second part of this plan. So we'll see, uh, like like we were talking about before, like the entire story may not be written yet. Um, the Bills... I, I can't imagine that they're going to go into the season with Cleo Shakir and Curtis Samuels as top two receivers. Like they, they have to have a plan beyond this. Um, and if they don't like, then what, what, I guess we'll find out soon enough, but I, I, I'd be shocked if, uh, if they don't have uh, something else up their sleeve. Yeah. I, I, you would imagine you'd have to, I mean, going in with those guys is like, yeah. yikes. Yeah. Um, his name's his name will be Matt if this trade goes bad. <laughs> and Mike says, I thought it was Matt B. Brandon Bean. Who's Brandon Bean? I was so confused. I was like, is that the Oakland A's GM? I'm like, no, no, that's that was uh, Billy that was Billy Bean. Bean. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, Brad Pitt. Oh. <laughs> Mike said, I never saw that movie. I always wanted to watch it, just never, yeah. never got around pretty, to it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, Mike says, uh, thank goodness, John Sanders. I need you with me in this chat. Um, <laughs> and uh, not, John asking, not a Matt Collins believer? <laughs> and you have uh, some interesting things to say about Matt Collins. I've said about Matt Collins. I mean, that means I'm <laughs> sure he's a nice fellow. <laughs> he has just a funny backpack that maybe is cool and trendy or maybe is borderline pedophilic. I don't know. <laughs> pedophilic? Pedophilic an adjective? Or did I just make that up? <laughs> I, I, th- I, I think you're right. Uh, <laughs> I, I love how like <laughs> a few weeks ago you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I could get canceled because of this. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm just saying it's just funny. A grown man wearing a child's backpack is interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is very, very, very interesting. Uh, or it's you... super cool. Maybe I, I'm not cool. I don't know. I don't know what the cool kids are doing these days. Maybe all the cool kids are wearing kids' backpacks, and that's just cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I thought we were cool in high school, Kenny. To be honest, I thought we were the cool well, guys. I, I thought so at the time. <laughs> I'm looking back, realizing maybe not so much. <laughs> oh man, do you think? <laughs> I go want to keep doubling it. Do you think what what do you think is worse? The the backpack or the lip gloss and uh nail polish that uh the Cal Williams wears? Uh I, I think the lip gloss and the nail polish are, are worse, and I don't I don't even want to respond to that one. That that one's yeah, yeah. The backpack is like playful and funny. The the nail polish and lip gloss, I just I'll keep my opinions to myself on that one. What if it's like uh what if it's like he lost a dare or something and he had to, he had to do that? Uh, and like you're out here like <laughs> you're like calling him these things. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um uh but no, I mean well Caleb Williams has seen a lot of him. So I, I trust would you take a number one overall if you're the Bears? I, I guess so. I mean I don't I don't know I don't know enough about uh I don't I you know I've watched a little college sports, college football these days. I just I pretty much rely on you and uh like you know, um, you know, um, uh, Matt Waldman's uh, rookie scouting portfolio, like, like between Dick Charlie and Matt Waldman, like those are the two websites I use to like read. And I, I don't, so I almost know, I almost know nothing at this point. You know, nothing, Jon Snow. Uh, that's fresh <laughs> in my mind because we're, we're doing, I'm doing the rewatch of Game of Thrones and, and, and uh, Tom's doing it. Tom's watching it for the first time. Uh, which yeah, is... my wife and I are watching The Wire right now. I got my wife to watch The Wire. It's oh, like, cool! After every episode, she says that was that was pretty good. Why is it so slow? <laughs> <laughs> every episode, I get there. It, what? Why are all these shows that you like so slow? They just drag on and just can't they just kind of move along? No, baby, that's the point. Right there. I mean, there's not like it's not like a fast action like show. You know, it's a lot. It, it, it does move slowly, but it, it's it was a phenomenal show. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, that's cool that you're watching it. Where are you in the show? What season? Uh, we are uh, episode seven. Just finished, I think. A season one. Yeah, so you're season one. Okay. Um, I think there's <laughs> ten episodes in season one, or twelve. There's twelve. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, yeah, no, that was a great show. Cassandra, not a fan of Game of Thrones. Uh, Soft core porn for a boy in herds. <laughs> I know, I know a lot of a lot of girls uh, who like Game of Thrones as well. We used to have um, I used to have these watch parties at my house uh, first five seasons, I think. Um, and uh, like we we had like huge gatherings here. Like we'd have uh, th- like we'd have so many people that we'd have people upstairs. I mean, you know, the layout of my house, Kenny. We'd have people upstairs watching it and we'd have people down here watching it, too. Like we, like two separate rooms. And like so some people I didn't even know would show up. Like these two girls came like for like three or four episodes, and I was like, "Who that? Who are you people? <laughs> like I don't even know who you are." But they they brought like snacks. I was like, "Okay, like you're you're more than welcome if you bring Doritos." Like, um, I'm all for you for you being here. But like I just like didn't know who these people were. Um, but no, it's uh, no, and like a lot a lot of the people we had here were were girls. So um, it was uh, more than just uh, software point for for boy nerds. I mean, Cassandra's not totally wrong. <laughs> No, I like I, I think I think it's more like that category is more for like um Lord of the Rings, you know? Um you, you know what I mean? Like like that like all fantasy, but like Game of Thrones is more like politics and backstabbing and like it's kind of like House of Cards meets Lord of the Rings. So like the House of Cards part somewhere of the in show, between, yeah, yeah. Right. I thought the House of Cards part of the show was way more interesting than the fantasy stuff, uh right. personally. 
Um, I mean, George R. R. Martin in the books, you know, he's writing, he's putting this together. He's, he's in essence, um, uh, he's mimicking, um, he's mimicking, uh, you know, um, the world, the real world in which we're in. I mean, he's, you know, he's mocking. So, yeah. And a lot of football references in there too. Uh, NFL because uh, he had, he had the, the giant name Juan Juan, um, one, one as in 11 Phil Sims. Um, and then he had that, he had that, um, that that military guy he named like close to the Belichick who who went undefeated in battles but lost but got eaten by a giant um so, so great um so i don't I'm like and uh because i just it to softcore porn for nerds is that better I, I these girls who showed up that i didn't know like they were smoke shows man <laughs> like, they were like nine or ten out of ten so uh i don't think they were nerds i, I just didn't know who they were <laughs> but it's like, it was like strangers showing up at Walt's house. <laughs> i know it was like i mean obviously they were friends of friends i just don't who, didn't know whose friends they were but they they were just like they were just there um uh, walt- uh, yeah. uh, for those Walt used to throw these legendary parties. I don't know if you have any parties these days in your house, but uh, not with not with kids here, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there is a picture of me and you floating around. I don't know what year this was taken. When I'm in an Elvis, so it was a Halloween costume, and I'm in an Elvis costume, uh, um, or Halloween party, and I'm wearing, I'm just an Elvis. I don't remember what year that was though. Was that 2009? I don't remember. Anyway. Oh man, I'm, I'm gonna try to look it up and find it if uh, and show it if you don't mind. Um, yeah, let's go for it. I mean, I was like 50 pounds lighter back then. It was a different era. This different version of me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I was I was way lighter back then too. I was like 160 or something, and now I'm like uh, I'm like 210. I'm like the fattest I've ever been. But it's like I I can't I can't work out like with with the two kids. I go to the gym like once a month. Um. So it's like, I don't know. I mean, it, it's obviously worth it. Like, I, you know, I wouldn't trade my kids for anything, but like, it just, right. like, it's, uh, like, it's, just, I feel like super fat, but, um, you know, it was bound <laughs> to happen, I suppose. Um, all right. So, wait, wait, it was the Elvis one, right? Yeah. I think that was the one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, there might be multiple. I don't remember it. Let me see. <laughs> I found it. It's, uh, I, I, man, I don't know if I could zoom in. Oh, okay. I can zoom in. Hold on. Uh, here we go. Uh, so for you were Elvis, I was Jersey Shore trash. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> here we go. There you go. Look at this. <laughs> oh, uh, that, that is great. 2010. 2010. 2010. Right? Yeah, I had just moved into the house. This, this is the first year I moved into this house. I moved in July, so I was, this is my third month there, uh, or fourth month, I guess. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, I was uh, I was uh, Jersey Shore trash. You were Elvis. Um, we had a hot girl here dressed as Mickey Mouse, and uh, this guy who d- did not dress up <laughs> for Halloween for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> this is uh, so this is what led you to one of these parties that Walt would have with random people that Walt didn't even know coming into the parties sometimes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I would not like we'd have like 50, 60 people here. I'd be like, I wouldn't know half the people. Um, in fact, in fact, I met my wife at one of my parties, uh, I didn't know who she was. Uh, I was playing beer pong uh, with my friend Paul, and uh, these two girls I'd never seen before were at the other end of the table. Um, and th- like we had won like seven or eight games in a row, and I was like tired of playing beer pong. I'm like, I like, I like. And my friend Paul was like, "Wow, that girl's pretty cute." And I was like, "Oh, I was like that other girl's pretty cute." I'm like, you know what? Let's beat them and then let's talk to them. And uh, that's how I that's how I met my, my wife. But I was super drunk that night. And here we are, many years later, two kids. Yep, yep. I was uh, I was at the end of the table where that Flyers guy is. That's where I was standing with uh, with my friend Paul. That's me. So that was my uh, that's my Elvis costume. I was Elvis in 2010. That's awesome. My my daughter, by the way, is a huge fan of Elvis. Like uh, she, she'll be crying, and then like she, I, and like I, I've discovered. I don't know how I discovered, but she she likes Elvis. But like I'll I'll, I'll play a song by Elvis, and she like starts laughing. <laughs> I don't know why. But she, she just likes love. She loves him. Um, I'm like saying he's got a flyer seat shirt on. Yeah, that's that's a great, great costume. You can at least it's like wear a jersey. You can at least wear the jersey and say, like, oh, I'm this guy for Halloween. Or like it's just a it's just a t-shirt. I don't know. It seems uh I don't know. Oh, who knows? Maybe he wore a mask and he took it off. I, I forget. It's a good guy. Like I'm not not trying to trash this guy. This, guy, this guy's name's Ray. He's a he's a good guy. So um just giving him a hard time for not dressing up for Halloween. Um John says uh, Game of Thrones is more house of cards than Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's it's like 80% house cards away from Lord of the Rings, maybe. 
partic- particularly the early the early seasons. I mean, I think mm-hmm. that's that that probably is not true for the later seasons. Yes. Um. Yeah. I I, I agree with that. Um. Goalie mask, perhaps. I, I don't think I don't think he would wear a costume. I, I know this this I know the guy's personality is like one not to wear a costume. I don't think like. Um, but I, whatever, it uh, doesn't matter these days. I haven't, I haven't like, I haven't talked to most of these people at the party. I've that girl in the Mickey mouse costume. I haven't talked to her in a decade. And that guy at the flyers Jersey, I used to see him all the or shirt. I used to see him all the time. I haven't, I haven't spoken to him in like a decade either. It's like, I guess like once I got serious with my girlfriend, then we got married, like just to stop seeing people, but that's part of growing up, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All those, all those parties that we had, like we, like I'd have people here until like 6 a.m. That's just like drinking. Like I remember, um, we had a crazy party here with like 50, 60 people. And like, I would like, like people at like 4 AM people started playing like the switch. Um, and then like, there's still three or four people here at 6 AM just lingering around. I'm like, like guys, like uh, I'm having fun playing video games. Could you just like leave so and go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it. Yeah. 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 It was fun. Uh, Mike says uh, <laughs> pedophiliac sounds like hemophiliac who drinks Pedialyte. <laughs> there we go. We'll, we'll end on that. So, uh, yeah, uh, great doing the show with you, Kenny. Uh, thanks, everyone, for commenting and watching. Really appreciate it. Please hit like, subscribe, comment below, share this video. Uh, visit the link in the description for the merch store. All that mean a lot to us. Uh, also, support our my book, uh, Jerks of the College Years, available on Amazon. Uh, Kenny, do you want to shout out your site one last time? The cap is fake.com. If you believe the cap is real, visit the cap is fake.com. That's right. Lots of great articles on it. If you haven't seen it. Um, and the two new articles, which I haven't read yet, I've been behind with my daughter not sleeping, but I will read them sometime soon. I'll read them before you come on next week. So All right. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and tomorrow we're going to be on with Tom and or Saturday. I'm not sure. I have to talk to Tom. I haven't spoken to him this week yet um but we uh, will be in touch with him tomorrow so uh want at least one of those days he will be on uh but either way we'll have shows anyway on thursday and saturday and then obviously starting next week as well so uh yeah once again guys thank you so much uh thank you especially to degenanon five dollar super chat and kevin with the 15 dollar super stickers uh, across two stickers thank you so much uh just again really appreciate the, the support uh awesome, but I, yeah, thank you yeah yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I hope everyone has a great night. Uh, you too, Kenny. And um, I will talk to you tomorrow. Shout out to Matt Bean. You the man, Walt. <laughs> That's right.